Monday and welcome to another episode of Brain Scratch Case Cracked. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Before we start today's episode, I want to let you guys know about a little surprise I've been working on. I've heard for a long time, John, we really wish that you had a podcast. And of course, I've got a few podcasts now, but they're with co-hosts. People have been asking specifically for a Brain Scratch type show uh, with me. So I'm starting a new podcast. It'll be starting in September of 2020, and it is called Seriously Mysterious. If you want to learn more about it, head over to www.lordandarts.com. You'll find a link for it there, and there's a little bit of a teaser episode that's already been hosted that you'll be able to get to if you find the picture of Seriously Mysterious and click on it. So please check that out. Today's case, of course, has the critical pieces that help solve it, but there is maybe one or two of those pieces that some people, including the people actually trying to solve this case, consider deals with the devil. Let's see what this is about. Kelsey Barrett might have been born and raised on a hay farm, but she would fly higher than anyone ever expected. Born in 1986, she spent her childhood on an isolated farm in Washington while she dreamed of one day becoming a pilot. It was a dream she would see come true. After attending pilot school, she worked as a flight instructor at Falcon Air Force Base in Grand Junction, Colorado. But even with her dreams coming true, there was still one that she wanted very badly, and that was a husband and family. She was a farm girl looking for someone with strong family values, someone who held the same beliefs and morals. That's when she met and started a long-distance relationship with Patrick Frazee. Kelsey met Patrick online on a dating website in March of 2016. She instantly fell in love with the handsome cattle rancher. The two kept up an online relationship until she moved to be closer to Frazee and the 30-acre family ranch in rural Florissant, Colorado. There, he raised cattle and worked as a farrier, shoeing horses and trimming donkey hooves. Soon, she became pregnant with their daughter, Kaylee. In February of 2017, she told co-workers that she would be getting married soon. But even after Kaylee was born in October of 2017, Patrick and Kelsey continued to live separately. She spent all of her free time after work with Patrick at his farm, driving almost an hour each way. On her days off, she and Kaylee spent their time there as well. Patrick was rarely seen at her Woodland Park condo in Colorado Springs. Kelsey loved being a mother, but all too quickly, her relationship with Patrick became strained. The commute to work in Grand Junction, taking care of the baby in Colorado Springs, and constantly going to Patrick's ranch in Florissant wore her down. She did her best to persevere, trying to make a good life for the couple, and their daughter. On the morning of November 22, 2018, Cheryl Barrett, Kelsey's mother, spoke to her daughter about what she was going to get Kaylee for Christmas. The two also talked about plans to pick out a Christmas tree. Before hanging up, she asked her mother for a bread dip recipe before ending the conversation to begin her Thanksgiving Day shopping and preparation. Thanksgiving came and went, and Cheryl didn't hear from Kelsey even though the two had made plans to make contact. By the 2nd of December, she still hadn't been able to reach her daughter and was concerned enough that she called police in Colorado Springs from her home back in Washington and asked them to conduct a welfare check. When police arrived at the condo, they immediately noticed that both of her vehicles were parked out front. When they were given entry to her home, they found no sign of her, but were able to confirm that she left with only her purse. Her suitcases and cosmetics had all been left behind. The family insisted that this was highly suspicious, prompting police to start a missing persons investigation. When police questioned Patrick, he stated that Kelsey had ended their relationship the day before Thanksgiving. He said things were not working out between them and she wanted a fresh start. On Thanksgiving Day, he met Kelsey and exchanged all of her belongings for their daughter, which she supposedly left with him. He also produced text messages that she had sent to him over that weekend to back up his story. He told officers that Kelsey had struggled with depression and he had to take her gun away from her at one point for her own safety. The investigators checked with Doss Aviation to see if Kelsey had been to work. 
she hadn't. But they said they received a text message from her on November 25th saying she was sick and wouldn't be back for work until the following week. They verified that all of their planes were accounted for and none of her co-workers had seen her there. The same day that Doss received the text message, Kelsey's cell phone pinged over 800 miles away in Gooding, Idaho. Gooding police were contacted, but unable to find her as well. Police continued treating this as a missing persons investigation. Vigils were held, posters were handed out, a reward was offered, and pleas were made by the family to the public for her safe return. On December 5th, Cheryl and Kelsey's brother traveled to Colorado and searched her condo for themselves. Immediately, they recognized that some items, such as a rug, were missing from the home. Other items had smudge marks on them as if they had been recently cleaned. It was when her brother discovered blood on the base of the toilet that investigators took another look. This time, they sprayed luminol and found trace amounts of blood everywhere in the bathroom. DNA tests would show it was Kelsey's. In the days and weeks that followed, police began to pull together CCTV camera footage from around town. First clip they found was on Thanksgiving Day at around noon. She was entering Safeway with Kaylee, buying groceries as well as a poinsettia. Then, at 1.30 p.m., footage from Kelsey's neighbor's CCTV camera shows her at the condo with Patrick, Kaylee, and that same poinsettia. Later that day, Patrick is recorded at the same door by that same camera, but this time, no Kelsey. Cell phone records show that Kelsey's phone traveled to Patrick's parents' home that day, even though he told investigators that she did not accompany him. The next time Patrick was caught on camera was November 24th at a Conoco filling a can of gas. While speaking to Kelsey's friends, investigators learned that Frazee had an old girlfriend that wanted to get back together with him. They said it had irritated Kelsey, but she didn't think too much about it. That woman was a nurse in Idaho named Crystal Lee Kenny. After Frazee handed over his cell phone and a DNA sample on December 12th, investigators realized Frazee had made dozens of calls to a number in Idaho that they learned belonged to Crystal Lee. Crystal and Patrick met just after high school and dated off and on for years. Eight months before Kelsey's death, things heated up after Crystal went through a divorce and was awarded custody of her two children. Investigators would learn that was when she began making trips to visit Patrick. Crystal Lee was first approached by law enforcement on December 15th. When questioned, she initially said that she didn't know Kelsey or Patrick. During a second interview, she changed that, saying she knew Patrick and had spoken to him the month before, but it was about purchasing horses. Uh, however, that contradicted the phone records. When the FBI got involved, she decided it was time to tell the truth, and the truth was terrible. In order to get a full confession, prosecutors agreed to make a deal with the devil, as they called it. Kenny agreed to plead guilty to a lesser charge in exchange for a full confession. In her confession, she stated that two months before Kelsey's death, Kenny was told by Frazee to kill his fiance three different times. Patrick claimed Kelsey was going to take him to court to get full custody of Kaylee. He said she was abusive. He was afraid she would harm their baby and she needed to go. The first time, Kenny agreed to fill Kelsey's favorite drink, a Starbucks caramel macchiato, with a lethal dose of Ambien and Valium. After driving from Idaho to Colorado, Kenny chickened out, leaving the lethal cocktail out of the drink, but still giving the drink to Kelsey, claiming that she was just being a friendly neighbor, even though Kelsey obviously didn't know her. Angry at her betrayal, Frazee told her to try again, this time using a metal pipe to beat Kelsey to death. Again, she made the drive, but couldn't do it, and drove back to Idaho. A week later, he called with a third plan. This time, she was to use a baseball bat. Kenny told investigators she couldn't go through with the plan yet again, but that on November 22nd, Frazee did. She stated that he called her during her Thanksgiving dinner and told her she had a mess to clean up at Kelsey's condo. 
Busy with personal matters, it was two days later before she made the trip. When she arrived, Frazee told her that on the 22nd, he had convinced Kelsey to play a little game with him. While their one-year-old daughter played in a playpen in the next room, Frazee blindfolded Kelsey and began to place differently scented candles under her nose to have her try to guess what scent it was. While he had her lulled into a sense of false security, he grabbed the baseball bat and ended her life. Kenny stated it took her hours to clean all of the blood from the residence. All the while, as she cleaned, Frazee left the scene but called her over and over, insisting that she find everything. There was to be no evidence left anywhere, especially teeth. He was terrified that one of the teeth would be found during a search. Gathering up anything she couldn't get clean, Kenny placed the bags in the back of Frazee's truck beside an ominous black tote a tote that had been in the truck since Thanksgiving Day. Once the couple made it back to Frazee's farm, they gathered the blood-stained evidence and the black tote, doused them with gasoline, and burned them on a pile of haystacks. A cadaver dog would later choose that spot as a positive hit. Investigators realized that the can of gas that Frazee filled at the Conoco on the 24th was the same gas used to burn the remains of his fiance. In other footage, investigators saw the same black tote sitting in the bed of his truck. Once everything had burned, Kenny drove through the night back to Idaho with Kelsey's phone and placed her final call and texts before burning it on November 25th, ending any hope that Idaho police had of finding her cell phone. Kenny insisted that she did everything Frazee told her to because he had threatened her life and the life of her children. She did, however, offer investigators some hope. She told them that she didn't carry Frazee's orders out to the letter. She insisted that she had left at least two patches of blood as evidence in the house for authorities to find during a search. Without a body or a murder weapon, officers arrested Frazee on December 21, 2018 and charged him with first-degree murder and several other charges. Little Kaylee was taken from him and kept in protective custody before get being given over to Kelsey's family. Almost a year later, Frazee's three-week trial began. Prosecutors called witnesses who recounted disturbing statements made by Frazee to friends before the murder. In June of 2019, during a search of his farm, a tooth fragment was found at the spot where Kelsey's body was burned. It was sent off for DNA testing, but could only show that it belonged to a female. The final witness for the prosecution would stun the jury. An inmate serving time with Frazee claimed that the former rancher had asked him for help. Frazee wanted his fellow inmate to kill key witnesses in the trial, including his ex-mistress, Crystal Lee Kenny, her parents, her ex-husband, friends of his, and some of the investigators working the case. Frazee wanted 10 more people murdered and often relayed his instructions through notes he passed to the inmate. He promised to take care of the man financially once he got out of prison if he could arrange the hits. One note read, I'd really like to see Crystal with a bullet in her head. No video, no weapon, no body, no forensics. Another note stated, they all need to disappear or be unseen until after the trial. In addition to the people he wanted killed, the notes also included detailed instructions on where the witnesses could be found. The inmate stated that Frazee told him to flush the notes once they had been read, but he decided to keep them. Taking them to investigators, the inmate insisted that he just wanted to do the right thing, but also required a plea deal in exchange for the information. Making yet another deal with the devil, prosecutors agreed to reduce his 30-year sentence over burglary charges down to a misdemeanor drastically cutting his sentence. After a 70-hour trial with no body and no murder weapon, in just four hours on December 18, 2019, a jury unanimously found Patrick Frazee guilty. He was sentenced to life in prison plus 156 years. To this day, Kelsey's body, nor the murder weapon, has ever been found. After the verdict was read, the Barrett family sobbed and celebrated the win, even though they felt that the plea deal Kenny received was too lenient. 
Crystal Lee Kenny was sentenced to just three years in prison, the maximum sentence for tampering with evidence, to be followed by one year of mandatory parole. Quote, the only thing she didn't do was swing the bat, Cheryl Barrett said in a statement to the court. Now, instead of a day of relaxation, Thanksgiving Day will always be the anniversary of her daughter's death. Cheryl dreaded the day that she would have to explain all this to Kay Lee, who still calls out for her mother. Kelsey's co-workers sent notes to the Barrett family, which were read before sentencing. They insisted that Kelsey's light would be missed. One co-worker wrote, she mattered and she made a direct impact and difference in the lives of so many and will continue to do so as the students she instructed will pass their knowledge along to the next generation. Case Cracked. We would like to thank the Daily Mail, ABC News, the Denver Post, Oxygen.com, NineNews.com, TheGazette.com, KOAA.com, and Crime Online. And of course, the biggest thank you goes to Christy Arnhart for researching and writing up today's case. We also wanted to let you know about a great episode of 48 Hours. Watch the one titled Justice for Kelsey if you're looking for more information about this case. We'll have a link to it in the description box below. This is one of those cases that just absolutely tears me up. Um, there's a lot of cases that I've looked into over the years where there's a domestic violence component and it never gets easy to deal with these things, especially seeing the holes that they leave in these families and children with without their parents. This, this is a child that now will never know both of her parents. And it's, it's, it's tragic. How else can you look at it? Um, I've put together a page of information for people that need to know more about domestic violence over at brainscratchers.com. I'm going to have a link to that in the description box down below as well. One very common aspect to this case that's being discussed online is really about Crystal and how can you let a man talk you into doing things like this? Uh, and I think it's it's a reasonable question. Now, of course, we did hear the aspect that she felt like she was being threatened or her children were, were being threatened. And I, I understand that. But there's so much premeditation that's going on here. And with him trying repeated times, wouldn't it have been easy for her to capture one of those conversations with him and then take that to the authorities and say, hey, you know, this guy that I've been sleeping around with, he's trying to get me to kill someone. Uh, couldn't that have offered her some protection and maybe avoided all of this in some way? I kind of have to wonder about that. But of course, I understand that in some of these violent relationship situations, the control mechanisms are extremely, they run deep and they run very, very strong. Uh, at one point, they did actually search the landfill, but they didn't find anything there. And also, just a little bit of a note, the Barrett family has filed a civil lawsuit to seek damages in this case. We couldn't find much more in terms of an update on that. I don't know if it's, it's probably still open with how recent this is. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this case in the comments down below. A big thank you to PayPal supporters Grace Maloney. And Grace, thank you so much for that message as well. Uh, Jennifer Wilson, Michael Park, Kelly Joe, and Nicole Miner. If you would like to support the channel, please visit www.lordandarts.com. There you can sign up for PayPal, sign up for Patreon, or buy merchandise. All of it helps keep me here and always with limited commercials. And sometimes we have to go completely without ads to be able to freely and properly discuss these cases. Together, we'll continue learning about justice and how to keep ourselves and our families safe. I'll see you again on Wednesday with a new episode of Searchlight, right here on the Lord and Arts channel.